Hello, and I hope you're enjoying this beautiful day today, wherever you are. I'm in Michigan, and it's uh, the tail end of summer, so we're enjoying every single day we can have and until it's gone and the snow gets here. I wanted to go over my uh, blood tests from when all this started till now. So... I've been on the Gleevec now for almost 30 days, uh, about 28 days, and initially I had went to my doctor uh, and got the first blood test, and that was on May 5th. On May 5th, they found out that my vitamin, my vitamin B12 was over 2,000, where it should be between 232 and and 1,245. My white blood cells were 17,600 and they should be between 3.4 and 10.8 and my vitamin D was 29 where it should be between 30 and 100. Um, we agreed to wait a month and retake my blood uh, with no supplements because I was taking a lot of vitamins and whatnot so we thought well we won't take any we also did a uh, uh, I had a I had COVID early on when it first started but uh, we wanted to make sure that I hadn't been exposed recently so I, I did go get a antibody test and it was negative so um, you know just kind of ruling out the the big one going around uh, during that time. So a month later, I go back, haven't been taking my supplements, you know, been taking real good care of myself, and my white blood cells were down a little bit, 16,006, but this time we did a differential and the Bezos were 0.7, where they should be around 0 to 0.2. My limps were 4.8, normal range is 0.7 or 3.0 to 3.1. And my monocytes were uh, 1.8, where they should be between 0.1 and 0.9. And my neutrophils were a little high at 7.5. Um, so we decided to wait two more weeks and I thought I, maybe I had like an ingrown toenail. So I wanted to go see a podiatrist about all that. So on June 28th, I went and saw the podiatrist. I had already seen the podiatrist. And, you know, um, at that time I was actually on uh, antibiotics because I thought I had an infection in my toe or something. And so we took more tests and found out that my white blood cells are 18,000 for, yeah, I was about as uh, accepting of having cancer as anybody would be, right? And at this time, I got an invitation to the cancer center to talk to an oncologist, hematologist, and I can't, and I uh, said, no thanks. Um, I don't have cancer, so we'll, yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Here we are, June 28th. <laughs> 18,400, Bezos are 1.1, Limps are 4.2, Monocytes are 2.6. They're all high. Everything else is normal. So, finally, my doctor convinced me to go see the oncologist, hematologist, after all else failed. And, of course, the earliest I could see him is July 9th. And so here we are, May, June, July. So two months later... I show up into his office and of course I did some blood work after he told me he thought I had CML and uh, my white blood cells were 21,900 in his office my limps were 4.7 my monos were 1.1 my basals were 1.1 so the only thing that really went up was my limp and so I thought maybe it was a conspiracy and they were all trying to kill me. 
that I didn't have cancer, but they needed to sell this drug, you know. It's expensive. Maybe they're just recruiting people. So, instead of going to LabCorp, I went to Quest Diagnostics and got my own white blood cell test with differential to see, and vitamin D, see if I all the vitamin D I was taking was helping at all. And uh, my white blood cells came back at 20,500 and my vitamin D went up at 31. At this point, I'm starting to realize that something's wrong with me, apparently. And uh, I got a little more accepting about it. So here we are waiting for the bone marrow biopsy and the last bit of blood work before I start my medication on August 5th. Here we are. We started on May 5th, June, July, August. Three months later, I start my medication. My first blood test got lost at LabCorp because somebody sent it over without my birth date and a, and a lab order. So we don't know what that was. But on August 17th, my white blood cells were 7,400. And normal range is 3.4 to 10.8. And mine were 7.4. And my platelets were 190. And so obviously the medication's working, it's doing its job, we're two weeks in, and already I'm where I need to be. Then August 24th, white blood count is 5.2, platelets is 142. Uh, normal platelets are going to be between 150 and 450. You know, white blood cells are 3.4 to 10.8, uh, getting a little scared because I'm thinking oh no 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 August 31st which was this week white blood cells 4.2 3.4 to 10.8 is normal so we're still in normal range and then platelets is 100 uh, there is a mark on my blood test that says alert so I called my pharmacist and told him about my platelets. And he said, if they go any lower, we may have to, uh, we may have to lower the medication. That typically they don't do a transfusion unless your hemoglobin is low for platelets. And then I don't know about corticosteroids or whatever. He said they're probably going to adjust the milligrams of my medication if it doesn't stabilize by next week. So I'm not scheduled for a blood test next week, but I'm going to call and make sure they order me one um, uh, so we can, we can see. Because uh, not having enough platelets, uh, you could bleed to death. Um, you know, you could have hemorrhaging. And so some of the signs to look for is petechiae or those purple little dots on your legs. Uh, blood in the urine. Uh, these are all signs that, uh, that I don't want to see. And then having my white blood cells at 4.2, I'm a little more susceptible to infection. Um... Maybe not any more than I was before because we don't know how good my white blood cells were. But uh, definitely something to, to uh, keep an eye on. I'm glad the medicine's doing what it's supposed to do. But I think it's doing too good a job from those numbers. So hopefully I either get a rebound uh, next week or, you know, we figure this out before it's too late and something bad happens um wish me luck pray for me like and subscribe and i'll keep this going thank you so much have a great day